Welcome to the So Verve Lounge, a podcast for modern entrepreneurs that focuses on digital marketing ecosystems for small businesses. Join your host, CEO and marketing director, Stephanie Rubio, as she brings you marketing tips with a shot of Cafe Con Dulce. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Silver of Lounge. My name is Stephanie Rubio. I am the CEO and Marketing Director here at Silver of Marketing Group, bringing you another episode, and I believe this is episode number 50, if I'm not mistaken. We have reached 50 episodes in about a year and a couple of months. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, we're actually ahead of schedule on the amount of content that I was hoping to uh, deliver to you through this podcast. And I'm so excited for that. I have some episodes coming up that are going to be geared towards not only the goals that we have here in-house at Sober, but also how you can continue to implement different goals for your business moving forward and into 2019. So I urge you to continue to stay subscribed to the podcast, leave us reviews, leave us comments on social, send me an email, let us know exactly what kind of content you're looking for and what kind of content you're hoping to receive during each of these podcast episodes. Of course, as a marketer, I am looking at trends, I'm looking at data, and I'm seeing how things are moving on social media. So I have a very distinct eye on what I believe you should be doing in your business. But that does not take away from the fact that you are going through very specific things in your business that um, we may be able to cover here and that in questions that we may be able to answer. So I want to go ahead and urge you to reach out to us and let us know as we move into December so that we can get you all ready and set to go for 2019. Today's episode, I'm actually going to cover a topic that I covered a little bit um, in the episode where we talked about customer reviews and the importance of customer reviews, but I want to take it a little step further uh, this time around, and we're going to talk about year-end client or customer retention strategies that can help continue to drive sales into December and then into the new year, okay? The point really is to utilize the holiday season as a way to gain momentum into the new year. It is not something that we're going to put all of this effort in and then put a hard stop sometime in December, take two, three week break during the holiday so we can spend with our family and friends and then come back to an empty inbox. That is not the goal. Okay, I want to stress that very clearly. That is not the goal. The goal is to come back and continue to utilize that momentum that we've gained throughout the holiday season as a way to continue to push sales into the new year. Okay, we know that that month, month and a half ish, right after the new year, depending on your industry, of course, sales slow down a little bit. So what you want to use is that you want to use the customers and the clients that you already have in-house to help you gain that momentum. For us, one of the best things that we could have ever implemented has been a proper and very thought out and well executed customer retention strategy. Now, this is going to look very differently for every business. It's going to look very different for you if you have a brick and mortar. It's going to look different if you are primarily a remote business owner who, you know, takes care of clients all throughout the world or the country. At Silver Marketing Group, we have different tiers of clients. So, whether they are our legacy clients, and these are clients who have been with us for over three years. We also have our VIP clients. We have VIP partners that we offer white label services to. And then we also have our routine retainer clients that we have onboarded within the last year and a half or so. 
So what happens at the end of the year when you have clients who are starting to look at their budgets for 2019 and they're starting to wonder whether or not, and this is specific to service-based businesses, what do you do when you have these clients that are starting to look at these budgets and they think, okay, how has this service been good to me? So one of the first things that I'm going to tell you is you, first of all, every client is treated the same. And I've mentioned this before in another podcast episode and on social where I have mentioned that I have had to let go of vendors because I know that I am not being treated equally. And no client wants to feel like another client is more important than they are, no matter what they're paying. The same thing for your routine customers. You want to make sure that you are delivering emails. For example, now that the holiday season is coming, you you cannot be delivering emails to current clients and current customers offering them massive, massive discounts on products that they just purchased a week or two ago, because that's going to give off a sense of, man, I should have waited, or, oh, I wish they would have told us sooner. And basically, you're never going to be right. They are always going to be right. So it's just going to give off a sense of, I got duped. Okay. So those are the things that I want you to start considering. But most importantly, every client is treated equal with the same amount of love and the same amount of respect so that you can continue to nurture everyone the same way. Once you have a client retention strategy in place, you can then continue to use that same model with every single client that you have onboarded. So year end, things that you can do in order to continue to drive in sales throughout the year and continue to get that stability in sales is the most important thing, which is actually reach out to people. Now, this even applies to nonprofits. You have to get people on the phone. You have to actually pick up the phone. And I know this is one of those things where it's nobody gets on the phone anymore, right? Nobody wants to have a conversation on the telephone. It's either email, text message, or voice chats. But in reality, there's nothing wrong with getting on the phone. A lot of people have business phone numbers, call. If they, if it goes to voicemail, leave them a detailed message to give you a call back. Once they call you, make sure that you continue to nurture that relationship. How were things this year? How was our service this year? Is there anything that we can do to better facilitate you our services next year? You have got to get your clients on the phone. Specifically, if you're a service-based business and you have a retainer um, offering for this particular client, you have got to get them on the phone and you have to ask for continued, you know, that continued sale. So for us, specifically now that the holidays are rolling around is we have created different coupon codes specifically to their legacy clients, specifically to the VIP clients on one-off services. Now, what are one-off services? One-off services for us are not services that are um, retainer-based, basically. They pay a one-time fee or they pay a deposit and then a final payment and we're done with that project or service. So for example, this is a wonderful opportunity with the new year. We have a lot of clients and we have a lot of colleagues who are starting second businesses, who are starting second projects. Now is the perfect time to give them prices on items that you may be selling on if you have a shop, if you have a brick and mortar. Now is the time to start sending out those um whether it's snail mail mailings, whether it's email um, newsletters with specific coupon codes specific to people that are loyal purchasers, loyal buyers, loyal customers, and loyal clients, okay? So that is number two. So number one, again, you have got to start learning how to get people on the phone, okay? And this is going to apply specific to service-based businesses with retainer clients. All you want to do is 
just get them on the phone, ask them how the service has been, and basically you want to continue to guarantee that they'll stay on moving forward. Now, even if a client is on an active contract in an active retainer that doesn't expire anytime soon, even into the new year, it doesn't matter. Get them on the phone, wish them uh, a wonderful uh, 2019, wish them a wonderful year end, and wish them continued success in their business, and then move into having that conversation of, are you pleased with our work? Are you pleased with our services? How can we improve upon this? Is there any feedback that you have for us? Um, we send out a customer, a year end customer um I want to, I don't want to call it a questionnaire. It's mostly a survey really. And it's very, um, specific to the type of clients that we have and they get very candid with us and they get very honest and it's the only way for you to improve service. You never want your clients to feel like they can't come to you to tell you how it is that you can improve upon those services, right? So again, fill out this survey for us so we can make improvements in our work and receive a coupon code. So again, you want to continue to incentivize them to make a move and to take action, right? So that was the, the first one. And then the second one is exclusive discounts specifically to them. So whether it's through an email, like I said, whether it's through snail mail, I have a client here in town, they still send postcard mailings and they, it still works. Um, we utilize it sort of like a you know, we do not only we utilize it not only for a holiday gift, you know, card, but we also utilize it for the purposes of being top of mind and staying in their mind of, you know, this is the sale that's going on and this is how you can take advantage of it. So that's number two. And then number three is gift back. So we have different ways that we do this in house. I, I, some people have said, you know, we take it a little bit up there and that's okay. It works for us. It works for the agency when it stops working for us. I'm so sure that I will come up with a different option, but we have done everything from a year end website updates. So this may include, depending on the client, um, uh, a complete website overhaul um, all the way to through content on their site, updates on different sales pages, updates to their sales funnels. Um, again, you guys know that we service primarily service-based businesses. So for me, that's always going to include things like a sales funnel. It's going to include things like making sure that all of their marketing automation is ready to go. Um, we have in the past also purchased agency grade plugins, for example, for WordPress that allow us to continue to provide service to our clients that are um, top of line, right? And so th these are expenses that our clients do not incur that we incur here. And again, you want to consider doing similar things for your clients. This could include personal possibly sending corporate gifts. This could include sending a personalized gift. It depends really on not only obviously what you know is, is affordable to you and your in your business, but it also has to do a lot with being personable to each client, which is why um, we have chosen to do gifts, uh, year end gifts is what we call it. Um, that are specific to, to each of the different accounts that we work with here um, at Silver. Of course, we send year and holiday cards. That's a given. Um, and those are a lot of fun. If you're going to send holiday cards, make sure you're sending them um, the last week of this month into the first week of next month, because otherwise, you know, they won't arrive. Um, but again, you want to be very personable in the gifts in what, and very intentional, I believe, which is why I would rather spend a little bit of time in doing something that's actually going to drive in uh, continued success to their bottom line. Um, and it also shows that we are, you know, we remain invested in their business moving into the new year. Okay, so again, these are ideas for you to take and you just to start formulating a plan. Okay, if you are in the real estate business, I have clients that um, 
do year-end sort of neighborhood updates. So what restaurants are new in town? Uh, what are their, you know, working hours? Do they deliver, um, you know, different community events that are coming up? So they sort of put together sort of like a neighborhood um packet update for the new year with activities and activities for the entire family and any kind of restaurant openings and it's such a good idea because again number one clients are going to start expecting this every year with excitement they know that oh i cannot wait to receive my year and packet with all of this information regarding our neighborhood but again it shows that you've taken the time to actually put something that's very specific to them rather than saying here's a bottle of wine or here's a basket of fruit which is not that personable okay so again just Start thinking of ideas on how you're going to continue to retain these clients and how you're going to continue to retain these services um, and customers into 2019. Again, I want to thank you so much for joining me in this podcast episode. I want to remind you that we are not going to be uh, back next week, but actually the first week of December, as we will be enjoying Thanksgiving with our friends and family here in Central Florida. I want to wish my entire team a very, very happy Thanksgiving and all of you a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. We are so grateful for you and so grateful for your support throughout this year. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and I will see you guys in December. Bye.